making decisions, you have to consider how this will directly impact the outcome of Surrey's community in a positive manner that aligns with the city's overarching goals. So for the district energy utility specifically, uh, making a decision that aligns with the goals and reducing greenhouse gas emissions in buildings in the community that we serve and doing it in a cost-effective manner is tremendously important. Um, when you make decisions at the city, you always have to consider the broader long-term impact and how this directly affects the livelihoods of the people and the businesses in the community that we operate in. So for example, uh, the utility decided to transition to a low carbon energy system um, that uses resources produced directly from Surrey's community, such as organic waste, geothermal energy, sewer heat. And by making this decision 10 years ago, we decided to directly impact the type of fuel that goes into heating people's homes. So this benefit is locked in for the next 50 to 100 year timeframe. It means uh, we're mobilising an organisation uh, when we make a decision. So in the city of Victoria's context, we have almost a thousand employees. We spend $250 million a year on services and uh, almost 100, over $100 million in capital projects. So when we make a decision that could impact in the, uh, the organisation, that's those are the sort of resources that could be brought to bear. And uh, when we invest those resources, it's to support a community of uh, uh, over 90,000 residents and businesses. So we uh, want to make sure we get it right. My decisions are uh, require a lot of uh, connection and consultation with the four Central Coast uh, First Nations that I work with. And that's the Weekendu, Heltsuk, Kiritsu Hay Hayes, and Weekendu, and, uh, and Newhawk. Uh, so we meet uh, every week um, by a conference line or, or Zoom, and, uh, and we discuss uh, what their priorities are from a, a fisheries management or marine conservation point of view. And that's, uh, that's where I get uh, you know, the guiding principles for the decisions I make about my work. So in terms of the context, you have to think about the big picture thinking of how this decision will impact the community in both the immediate and the long term. Um, so a decision that could benefit the community, um, as we see in the city, might not actually be well received um, to all individuals. You have to consider all the stakeholders that are surrounded around this decision. Um, so some of the challenges that I think of when I uh, make a, a big decision with respect to large infrastructure planning is, uh, first of all, money. Uh, big projects require big budgets and ultimately funding from higher levels of government. They could be provincial or federal authorities. Um, we also have to think about this, the stakeholders that are involved. And uh, ultimately, we have to receive council endorsement to use funds collected from revenue streams, whether it's the, the taxpayers or through our utility to fund these large projects. Um, another challenge or maybe consideration when making decisions is um, time. Um, decision making could take a tremendous amount of time because there's a lot of planning involved, a lot of engagement involved, and many stakeholders. Um, our utility works with a lot of developers, so we have to get their buy-in um, when we develop systems and have the buildings um, be compatible with our district energy network. Um, also, because we are a public facing uh, utility, have to gain support from the community ultimately um, when we decide, for example, what, what fuels to implement. Um, and also um, have to have a lot of extensive engagement with the, the stakeholders that we collaborate with um, to make sure that we comply with their laws and regulations and if they also have some vested interest in, in funding these projects. Central Coast Indigenous Resource Alliance was created specifically to create that coordination uh, between the four neighboring nations 
and uh, and people who can provide uh, technical support uh, like me. So um, by the time I started working with them, they already had in place this uh, weekly communications. And uh, when I first came in, people were very focused on their uh, marine spatial plans in which they were trying to delineate from a proactive perspective how they how uh, uses over their territories uh, could be done in ways that match their perspective and indigenous people who are very much interested in maintaining their traditional values, their traditional uh, governance structures uh, and uh, you know cycles on the land on, and on the water, but being all as well in a, in a modern context in which they have to engage with uh, you know stakeholders from fisheries, uh, they have to engage with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. So they basically created the structure for people like me to be regularly engaged with them. So at these meetings, I hear a concern about what uh, you know certain fishery management issue, um, uh, certain marine spatial planning uh, decision that needs to be made that needs technical support. So I turn those concerns into some kind of a research uh, or science response. Uh, often it engages a lot of primary research. So we've had long-term research on uh, rock fishes, on crabs uh, through, you know, collaboration with uh, uh, Simon Fraser University researchers who have been funded by pigs to study kelps and bryozoans. And all this stems from what we hear at these meetings about what needs to, to be addressed. I can take uh, I can take some time uh, to make some of the, the hard decisions, and I think probably the best way to illustrate that is to for me to give you an example, which is our climate leadership plan. Uh, it took uh, setting of some targets by council, so the council asked us to set some targets to deliver uh, a climate leadership plan. Uh, and GHG emission reductions that were consistent with uh, the Paris Agreement that was reached in December 2015. And so we, we did some research and we went back to Council and recommended targets in August 2016, which was to reduce our GHG emissions uh, across the community 80% by 2050 and to transition to 100% renewable fuels. Uh, there was, a, there was research involved in, in coming up with those targets and then there was further research involved in how do we develop the actions that will make sure that we can reach those targets. And questions come up around uh, what's, the, uh, what's the risk involved in that? What's the investment going to look like? How might those, what's the social impacts on our community? Uh, if we are investing in one area, will it adversely impact in another? So uh, given that the organization has over uh, 200 different uh, services that it offers, so you can imagine there's a quite a lot of complexity when you start to look at uh, transformational change that uh, something like the Climate Leadership Plan brings. So the checks and balances in place are, uh, we move on the direction of council uh, and uh, we have a senior leadership uh, that, uh, that's there to interpret council's wishes. And then there's people that need the legwork to understand what best practices are and what are the evidences to support evidence to support investment in different areas. So it's a very much a tiered structural approach and sometimes it can take a number of years, but when we're looking at decisions that could influence uh, a generation of uh, land development in the community, then uh, obviously we have to move with uh, caution and full understanding of uh, what we're doing. I think the key challenge is picking a research or science response that's attainable within our constraints in terms of funding, logistics, personnel, but that still attains the desired objective. I mean, in the end, uh, you know, we can publish something really fancy in a high-end journal, but if it's not landing uh, in a decision-making table, you know, that involves uh, the First Nations, that involves uh, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, and actually swaying the conversation, it's not really useful from the perspective of the nations. So the key challenge is just picking the right research question that we can answer and that actually makes a difference in terms of uh, management responses.
And also something to consider is uh, the knowledge associated with these technologies. We need to be um, confident that these technologies that we implement are, are proven and well demonstrated um, simply because their utility is such a large facing, um, you know, directly impacts um, a lot of individuals. We need to be um, assured that this technology is reliable um, in the day-to-day -day operations. Victoria, like most local governments, uh, doesn't have the luxury of a research and development department as much as uh, the occasions would merit it, especially in the area of climate change for everyone's kind of learning as they go. Uh, and we don't have uh, an opportunity to delay, like the targets are very aggressive and we need to be able to move quickly and uh, to create sort of transformation in the communities that's, that's needed. So that's where we start to rely very heavily on others and certainly working with the uh, University of Victoria and some of the other local uh, uh, research groups, uh, uh, organizations has been really important to us. Uh, they are kind of our research and development department. So they help us build the evidence to uh, support the decisions that we, we make to drive ourselves forward to make the change that, that we need, both as an organization as a community. Uh, in terms of opportunities, one of the things that local governments are very good at is collecting data. So we tend to have lots of information, but we don't have the resources to crunch that data. So that's in some ways where the opportunity for interesting and innovative research uh, resides is that uh, we can offer data up and uh, universities obviously have the resources and the desire to, uh, to look at the information and potentially come up with, uh, with uh, guidelines and recommendations that we can turn into policy and uh, investment to move us forward in the direction. Uh, we've been asked to go.